Happy New Year, everyone. The beginning of a new year is a great time for a smart home cleanup. Regardless of how many accessories you have, I wanna make sure that you're getting the best out of your setup. Having a smart home is meant to make our lives easier, but sometimes it sure doesn't feel that way. The more accessories, scenes, and automations, the more complicated. Thread, Wi-Fi, home hubs, manufacturer hubs, often with their own unique apps, it can get pretty messy. So make some time for some New Year's maintenance. Hi, I'm the Brad Lloyd, and on this channel, I'll help you build and maintain a smarter Apple home from product reviews to tips and tricks. Let's get started with my first tip. Scenes and automations can quickly get out of control. Personally, I'm always experimenting by moving devices into different rooms and I'm adding new scenes and creating new automations. There's also a limit of user created scenes of 100 and yes, I've hit this max before and it can be frustrating. Start by going through all of your scenes and just delete the ones that you don't use anymore. The funny looking scene names that you may see are usually created in third party apps like Eve, Home Plus 5, or Controller for HomeKit, all great apps. When you create an automation in those apps, it's actually creating a scene in the background that the Home app then uses to run those automations. This is actually true for automations built in the Home app as well, but they're hidden and they don't count against your maximum scenes. Be careful not to delete one of these third party scenes that you may still be using. It's sometimes a little hard to tell what automation the scene is being used for, but often you can figure it out by looking at the accessory state within the scene. For example, I can see this weird looking scene is set to turn the kid's bathroom lights to 100%. I can tell this is part of my Akara motion sensor automation that turns my bathroom lights to 100% with the condition when the lights are already off and during the day. This is an automation I still use, so I wanna keep that. For more information on conditional automations, I'll include a link to another video of mine that I did in the description. Another consideration when managing scenes is third-party scenes, in particular for me at least, Nanoleaf. If you have Nanoleaf products, then you can bring scenes into Apple Home by turning on Scene Sync within the settings of the Nanoleaf app. This is a nice feature because now you can set some really cool effects right in the Home app. The downside is that if you have a lot of scenes downloaded that you don't often use, then they will clutter up your scenes and they'll count against your 100 scenes in Apple Home. Also, if you delete a Nanoleaf scene in the Home app, but not in the Nanoleaf app, it'll come right back. So it's a good idea to go into each of your Nanoleaf devices and delete the scenes that you never use before deleting them in the Home app. I find that by having a more condensed list of scenes that are meaningful, help to reduce my stress and allow me to better manage the rest of my smart home. Depending on your setup, you may wanna do this every few months or at least once a year, as it can quickly get out of control. Of course, this is also a good time to update the scenes and automations that you didn't delete. Adjust the time when the lights come on or experiment with various light levels or colors. Maybe update some playlists that you're using in your scenes. It's also great to get feedback from others that you may live with to make sure the scenes and automations work for them as well. Your home hub stores your scenes and automations and is an important part of your smart home. So make sure it's set up and working well. A home hub can be a HomePod, HomePod mini, or an Apple TV running tvOS. There isn't much to do here, but more of a reminder to keep your software updated. This can be done easily by turning on automatic updates. If you have several HomePods or Apple TVs, it's worth noting that you can't choose which home hub to use as the primary. Apple does this for you automatically, and in my experience, HomePod or Apple TV, Wi-Fi or Ethernet, it doesn't seem to matter. Sometimes when you're experiencing problems in your smart home, restarting your primary hub is an effective way to resolve issues that you may be having, like automations not working, or lately, since the Matter update, all of my thread devices will sometimes suddenly stop responding. Typically, restarting your primary home hub will result in another hub being assigned as the primary, and this, in most cases, will resolve many of the issues that you may be experiencing. Also, if you're like me and you've been receiving those messages repeatedly asking to enter your Apple ID credentials into your HomePods, I feel your pain. It just takes a minute to enter your iCloud password, but if that message continues to persist, it's best to reset the HomePod. I'll include a link with instructions in the description. It's not difficult to do and it should fix the issue. Okay, this one can mean a lot of things. First, think about the devices that you're using and just make sure that they make sense. If you have a motion sensor installed but it hasn't been used in months, then maybe it's time to move it to another room, give it away, or store it for when you'll need it later. Next, stay on top of devices with low battery. I prefer to tackle these before they're fully dead and unresponsive. Many of these also take smaller coin-shaped batteries, so I try to keep them on hand. 
specifically CR2450 for Eve Weather and Philips Hue dimmer switches, CR2032 for flick buttons, the Wemo stage, and the Akara wireless mini switch, or even ER14250 for Eve door and window, just to name a few. A good app I recommend to view battery life is Home Plus 5. There's a tile for low battery so you can see all of the devices that are losing battery life. If you use controller for HomeKit, then you can go to maintenance, then see accessories with low power as well. There is an indicator in the Home app, though it doesn't appear on the main screen, it only shows if you're in the actual room. So if you don't have one of those third party apps, then you'll have to go room by room. I'd love to see a future enhancement for the Home app to send battery life notifications. Next, let's address those no response errors. Depending on how critical it is, you may need to deal with the issue right away, but sometimes I find myself ignoring these errors, hoping they just sort themselves out. Sometimes they do, but other times you need to take action. I try not to live with a no response error for too long. Most of the time, the issue is so easy to fix, just unplug the accessory and plug it back in. If it's something hardwired, then you can flip the breaker, wait 10 seconds or so, and then restore the power. Other times though, this isn't enough and you'll need to reset the device and add it back into Apple Home. Here's how you fix it. Start by going into the Home app and deleting the device. Take note of any related scenes or automations so you can set them back up after the device has been re-added. In terms of the factory reset, each device is different. A quick Google search usually does the trick. Sometimes devices will have reset buttons, other times you'll have to flip a switch on or off several times, or it may involve pressing and holding various buttons. Regardless of the method, it's usually quick and worth the effort for a working device. Of course, make sure that you have the HomeKit code available. Most devices will have the code printed on the device itself to make this easy. You can also check out the HomePass app that stores your HomeKit codes for situations just like this. If resetting doesn't work, then you may need to reach out to the manufacturer for support, but most of the time, in my experience, resetting should work. Quick one here, but it's worth keeping your home app organized. This includes organizing the list of rooms to make sure that they make sense. I like to do this in alphabetical order, which isn't done by default in the home app, another enhancement that would be great to see. Also, since iOS 16, you can no longer swipe left and right to change rooms. This was a feature that I used often, so hopefully it comes back in the future. You can organize this however you like, but if you have a lot of rooms, then you'll want a way to quickly find the room that you're looking for. Most of the time when I'm controlling accessories in the home app, I do it in the room, I just find it easier. Also something I wanted to mention, I have a room I call seasonal, and I use this to keep mostly Christmas smart home accessories after the holiday season is over. This is just my preference. Since many of these are smart plugs that aren't plugged in, they all have that no response error, which I know could be annoying for some people. For me though, I just find it easier to leave it set up and hide it in the seasonal room. I wish though that Apple Home had a way to temporarily disable or make an accessory inactive. This is also a good time to see what you've got as a favorite and make any changes there. And you can also change the wallpaper. The wallpapers that come with iOS 16 look nice and you can even customize this with your own photo. Check out Homepaper to create custom wallpaper with your own photos with a fading effect. Aside from that, try to stay informed with what's new. Especially as Matter continues rolling out, there will likely be a lot of changes coming in the years to come with more accessories to choose from. HomeKit News is one of my favorite places to see what's new and get some expert advice. Of course, I appreciate and recommend you following and supporting the other amazing smart home creators. I've got a great list of recommendations under the channels tab in YouTube. Also check out other great online content like blogs and articles. These can be an excellent way to get tips and tricks. Do your research, make informed decisions, and ask our amazing community questions. If you're not the only one in your household, then it's also beneficial to get the opinions from others in your home. I'm often asking my kids on advice on how to make the smart home more effective. What scenes do you like to set in the evening? What about at night? How are your smart buttons working? When you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, is there enough light? Is it too bright? And of course, my wife isn't shy to recommend improvements to scenes and automations either. These are just some of the tips that I think will help you to maintain a better smart home. Take a minute and let me know your thoughts and please share your tips as well so others can learn. I hope you enjoyed my first video of 2023. Thanks for your patience as I took a much needed break in December with my family to enjoy the holidays. I got lots of testing and product installations done. I'm excited to continue putting out more content this year and I appreciate your support. This video idea was submitted by a regular viewer last year. I'm always open to your feedback and ideas for new content. I've got some exciting products and videos to cover coming soon, starting with companies from Zemi Smart to Smartwings, Maris, and Lutron. I hope you all have a great start to the new year. 
Thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.